Welcome to my YouTube channel. So this video is about the web. Upon completion of this video, you could be able to learn what is web. Paano nga ba nag-work ang web? What is the difference between the World Wide Web at saka internet? Kasi madalas tayong napagpapalit yung dalawa na yon O alam natin, iisa lang yon. Ano nga ba ang website? At ano yung mga evolution ng website? Start na natin. Merong iba't ibang tawag kay web. World Wide Web, WW, W3. So, yan yung mga pwedeng itawag sa kanya. Ang World Wide Web o yung WW ay part ng internet. So, yung tinatawag na web. May hawak niya ang website at mga web pages. So, in short, it is a collection of websites or web pages stored in a web server and connected to the local computer gamit ang internet. So, the part of the internet that can look at with a special program na gumagamit ng browser. So, kung makikita natin dito, ang web ay isang interconnected system of public web pages so, na accessible, accessible siya gamit ang internet. So, basta lagi nating tatandaan na ang internet at web ay hindi parehas. So, ang web is one of many applications built on top of the internet. So, sabihin natin, the World Wide Web o yung web, for short, are the pages na nakikita nyo when you're at your device and sabihin natin online kayo. Pero ang internet, yan yung network of connected computer that the web works on as well as what emails and files travel across. So, ang web din ay composed of website, di ba? Ang websites are composed of pages like um, linked by hypertext links na sinulat siya gamit ang HTML. So, basta wag natin kakalimutan na ang World Wide Web o web ay part siya ng internet na nagko-contain o nag-hold ng website at mga, web, mga web pages. Ang web ay na-access natin gamit ng application na tinatawag na browser o web browser. So, ito yung mga sample ng mga web browser na madalas ginagamit. Pwedeng Chrome, Safari, UC Browser, Firefox, or Internet Explorer. Ang web browser, or which is commonly known na tinatawag nating browser, ay isang program na nagdi-display ng text, data, pictures, videos, animation, and more or siya yung nagdi-display ng mga website natin or mga web pages ng mga website. So, sabihin natin, dinobol click nyo yung browser icon na naka-install sa computer nyo, sa cellphone ninyo. Tapos, connected ka and na-connect ka sa World Wide Web. And, pwede ka na mag-search or pwede mong itype yung URL sa address bar para mapuntahan mo yung isang web or isang website. So, in the beginning kasi, the browser were used only for browsing. Kasi nga, due to their limited potential. Pero ngayon, ang dami ng advantage ng, ng browser. So, along with the browser, pwede ka nang mag-email, mag-transfer ng multimedia files, gamitin sa social media site, mag-participate ng online discussion group, and banami pang iba na pwede nang gawin sa mga, sa mga browser. So, some of the commonly used browser, itong mga nandito na nakita natin. And another information, itong web na to, so the World Wide Web was invented by the British scientist, yan si Tim Berners-Lee, noong 1989. So, nagtatrabaho siya noon sa CERN during that time. And or originally, na-develop ang web by him to fulfill the need of the automation, automated information sharing between sa mga scientists across sa buong mundo. So, nahihirapan kasi sila during that time na mag-collect or mag-collect mag ng data or magpalitan ng mga data. Kaya, nag, nakaisip niya na ma-develop yung ganitong kas automated sharing of information. So, that they could easily share the data and the result of their experiments and study with each others. So, yung, yun yung goal niya. CERN, or where Tim Berners-Lee worked, ay isang community yon yung CERN, na may 1,700 scientists na for more than 100 countries. May 1,700 
grad scientist mula sa iba't ibang country na yon So, nasa 100 countries yon So, yung mga scientists, nag spend sila ng time on certain site. And yung iba naman, nag spend sila ng time sa mga university nila, sa mga national laboratories nila, and yung iba sa mga home countries. So, kung kung titignan kasi natin, hindi lahat nandun sa may nandun sa mismong office nila. So, yung iba na sa iba't ibang lugar. So, there was a need for reliable communication tools so that they can exchange information. So, ang internet and hypertext were available at this time but no one thought how to use the internet to link or share document or share one document to another. So, si Tim... Nag-focus siya sa three main technologies that could make computer understand each other. So, pinokus niya yung sarili niya sa HTML, sa URL, at yung HTTP. So, ang objective behind the, behind the invention of WW was to combine the recent computer technologies, yung data networks, and hypertext into a user-friendly and effective global information system. So, in short, nagawa ang web dahil kay Timot Tim Berners-Lee noong 1989 para makapag-share o magkaroon ng automated information sharing yung mga scientists mula sa CERN. And paano nga ba nag-work ang web? So, nag-work ang web. So, let's say for example, in-access mo yung favorite, favorite website mo. Sabi natin, paborito mo YouTube o kaya Facebook. So, maraming complicated things ang nangyayari sa loob nun na hindi natin alam. How the web works outline what happened when you view a web page on your computer. So ngayon na intindihan na natin na ang World Wide Web o yung www is a collection of website na nakakonek sa internet para yung mga tao or makapag-search and share information. So paano nga ba nagwo-work? So ang web nagwo-work siya as per internet basic client server format. So, kung makikita natin dito, so ito yung ganito siya nagwo-work. So, nakabase siya sa client server format. Ang the server, ini-store niya at ini-store and transfer web pages or information to user's computer on the network when requested by the client. So, let's say for example, nag-request to you open niya ang Facebook. Re-request niya sa server, ibibigay naman niya yun yung server. Ang web server ay isang software program which serves the web pages requested by the web users gamit ang browser. Ang computer natin, or the computer of a user who requests document from the server is known as a client. Let's say for example, ikaw inopen mo yung Facebook, inopen mo yung YouTube. Client ka, nagre-request ka sa server ng YouTube at saka sa server ng Facebook. So, ang browser ang ginagamit mo. So, ang browser which is in installed on your cellphone or computer, ina-allow niya yung user to view and retrieve document. So, tatandaan din natin na ang lahat ng website ay naka historian sa mga web server. So, just as someone, sabi natin, nag nagre-renta ng bahay. Ang website, ino-occupy niya yung space in a several and remain stored in it. So, ang server, hinohost niya yung website whenever a user requests its web pages. So, ang website owner, kailangan niyang magbayad ng hosting price for the same. And the moment you open the browser or tinipe mo yung URL, like say for example, facebook.com, in the address bar, or nag-search ka sa Google na nag-search ka ng Facebook, Facebook. Ayan, so magpapakita naman yung Facebook na yon. So, ngayon, pag ginawa mo yun, yung www yung web, mag-start siyang magtatrabaho. Yan. So, merong main technologies involved sa pag-transfer ng information or ng web pages from server to client or yung computer user, yung client. So, this te technology include yung hypertext markup language, hypertext transfer protocol, and the web browser. So, sila yung nagtutulungan. So, kung makikita nyo dito, ito siya. Yan. So, from the client, pupunta siya sa magre-request sa server. Ano nga ba yung pagkakaiba ng World Wide Web tsaka ng internet? So, marami kasing tao na ginagamit nilang internet tsaka World Wide Web 
Minsan na akala nila parehas o kaya magkahi, pinaghihi, pinagpapalit nila yung definition. Inisip kasi nila minsan na parehas ang www sa internet. Pero hindi parehas yan. Ang internet ay mag Malaki ang pagkakaiba sa www kasi it is a worldwide network of devices like computers, laptop, tablet at marami pang iba. In short, ang internet connections of different hardwares and computers. So it enables user to send emails to other users and chat with them online. Sabi natin example, nag-send ka ng email or nag-chat ka sa isang tao online. So, gumagamit ka ng internet. So, para makarating sa kanya yung message mo, kailangan mo ng internet connection. But, when you have open a website, sabi natin open nyo yung facebook.com o google.com for information, so gumagamit ka ng World Wide Web. A network servers over the internet. So, yung, re- yung nag-request ka ng web page, from a computer using a browser and the server renders that web page to your browser. So, your computer is called a client who runs program or yung web browser mo and that's the computer or yung server for the information you need. Kaya kung makikita nyo dito, the internet is the connecting computers while the World Wide Web is connecting the people. Ano nga ba ang website? So, kanina sinasabi ko, web, web, for web, ba diba? Ano nga ba yung website? Sinabi natin, ang web is a collection of website and web page, sabi natin. Ang website naman is a collection of link web page that has a common theme or focus ay tinatawag na website. Let's say, for example, dito sa may, let's say, for example, dito sa may, ano na to, sa may YouTube. Yan. Dito sa my YouTube, may different web page yan. Let's say, for example, pumunta tayo dito sa your channel. So, makikita nyo ibang web page ulit yan. Pero, isang website lang yan, YouTube yan. So, let's say, for example, pumunta tayo dito sa my YouTube studio. So, iba ulit yan na web page, pero YouTube pa din yan. Ganun siya. So, this is web. Ang World Wide Web or yung web is a primary tool used by the billions of people to share read and write information to interact with other people via internet. Ang World Wide Web made much progress since it was advent. In, in this video, I will be sharing you a brief idea on the evolution happened sa, ano, sa web. From web 1.0 to, to 2.0 hanggang 3.0. So this is the evolution of web. Nung 1.0, yan yung read-only static web. So, 1990 to 2000 yan. So, when we said static, steady lang yan. Kung ano yung nakalagay dyan, hindi mo pwedeng galawin as a client. And we have the web 2.0, yung read-write interactive web. Yan yung 1990 to 2010 to present, meron pa din. And the web 3.0. Diyan, pwede na tayong mag-read, write, and intelligent web. Yan yung 2010 to present. So, kung makikita natin dito from evolution, ayan, mula sa PC era, 1980, nagkaroon ng web 1.0, web 2.0 to web 3.0 hanggang pataas. Ayan. So, mag-focus lang tayo sa web 3.0 na lang. And sa my web 1.0, which is the read-only static web, ang... First version ng web ay tinatawag na web 1.0. So, nire-refer siya o tinatawag din siyang syntactic web o kaya read-only web o read-only static web. So, yun yung mga terms sa kanya. Where the role of the user is limited. So, for reading, for reading information lang siya provided by the content procedures. So, there are no option given to a user or consumer or yung client to communicate back the information to the content producers. So, ang ex- ang, kaya nga ang example ng web 1.0 ay yung mga static website and personal site. Kasi walang kakayahan yung client mo na mag-comment o masabihan ka na palitan mo to ganyan. So, wala. Kung ano yung nakalagay lang doon ng mga data information, hindi mo yun pwedeng baguhin or hindi yun nababago because it is a static website. Yun yung sample. So, ang web 1.0, it is an old internet that allows people to read 
from the internet. So, yun yung pinaka-root dito, magbasa lang. So, most read-only web, it focus on companies' homepages. Then, divide yung World Wide Web into usable directories. So, pag sinabi nating web, is used as information portal. So, nag-start siya with a simple idea to put content together. And this is a static web or static pages ang mga gamit niya. The content is served from server file system. So, pages built using server side includes or common gateway interface o yung tinatawag na CGI. And frames and tables ang ginagamit sa pagposition and pag-align ng mga element or ng design ng mga ng website ng, na gumagamit nung, during the web 1.0. So, during this time, nung web 3.0, um, it can be used as a personal website naman. Pero it costs the user as per pages viewed. So, it has directories that enable user to retrieve a particular piece of information. And the example of 1.0 is the mp3.com, the homepage, directories, page views, mga HTML or portals. And during the web 1.0, ito yung pinaka-root na word niya, read-only web. And limited user interaction and lack of standard. And this is a web 2.0, which is the read-write intera interactive web naman na. So, during the web 2.0, oh, tinatawag din siyang social web or read-write web. So, 2000 to 2010. So, and meron pa rin ngayon hang hanggang ngayon yung ano, web 2.0, which facilitates the interaction between web user and the sites, with which in turn, in turn allows users to communicate with other users. So, during this era, every user can be content pro producer na. And content is distributed and shared between different sites. So, some of the most famous web 2.0 application ay yung Facebook, YouTube, Flickr, Twitter, Instagram, yung mga yan. So, the web technologies gaya ng HTML, HTML5, CSS3, yung mga JavaScript framework, yung React.js, AngularJS, Vue.js, ganyan yung etc. So, enables the startup to innovate new ideas, which enables user to contribute more in social web. So, ang web, ang web 2.0 is built around the users. So, producers just need to build a way to enable and engage them. So, during the web 2.0, it is a platform that gives the user possibility to control their idea. So, kung makikita natin, before, static lang yung website. Hindi ka pwedeng maglagay ng gusto mo as a client. Pero ngayon, nakakapag-post ka na kung anong nais mo. May mga kanya-kanya na tayong account. Kaya na natin makipag-communicate sa maging author. Ganyan. So, this is about user-generated content and read the right web. People are consuming as well as contributing information gamit ang mga blogs or sites and allows the user to interact with a page known as dynamic page. So, during the web 2.0, nagkaroon na ng tinatawag na dynamic page. So, in instead of just reading a page, di ba kasi yun si static eh, yung user ngayon can be able to comment or create a user account. So, ang dynamic page refers siya sa, or ang ibig sabihin niya is, refers to the web pages that are affected by user's input or preference. And is focused on the ability of people to collaborate and share information online gamit ang social media, blogging, and web-based communities. And during the web 2.0, dyan nagpakilala yung social networking, yung blogs, wikis, video sharing site. So, dito muna tayo sa social networking. Example niyan is yung Facebook, Twitter, yan, Google+, Plus, yung mga yan. Ang social net networking site is the use of internet-based social media sites to stay connected sa mga friends natin, families, diba, clients, co-worker, yan, so, sa mga iba't ibang tao. So, ang social networking can have a social purpose a business purpose or both through sites, kagaya ng mga example na ito, yung Facebook, anyan. Isang example din ng web 2.0 is yung blogs. Example naman ng blogs ay yung WordPress, yung blogger o yung Tumblr.
Ano nga ba ang blogs? Ang blogs ay is a discussion of information website published on the World Wide Web. So, nagko-consist siya ng consisting of discrete, often informal di- um, diary style entries. So, ang posts sa blogs are typically displayed in reverse chronological order so that the most re- recent posts appear first on the top of the web page. Yan. So, during the Web 2.0, meron din tinatawag na wikis. So, next naman yung tinatawag nating wikis. So, ang wikis ay isang hypertext publication, collaboratively edited, and may na-manage siya by its own audience. So, directly using yung mga web browser. Ang typical na wiki, nagko-contain siya ng multiple pages para sa mga subject or yung mga scope niya or yung mga sakop niyang mga topic or mga project. At pwede rin na ma-open siya for public or pwede rin sa mga limited use within the organizations para ma-maintain yung mga internal knowledge base. Madalas ang wiki, ano yan, pinagsama-samang idea ng mga isang, ng iba't ibang mga tao. Let's say for example, definition ng computer. So ipapasok nila doon sa wikis yung mga different um, definition ng computer. And ang mga sample ng wikis ay yung Wikipedia, Wikibooks, Wikiversity, yung Commons, yung Wiktionary, Wikicote, Wikivoyage, Wikidata, Wikinews, Wikispecies, MediaWiki. So, yun yung mga sample ng mga wikis. And meron din isang example pa ng Web 2.0 ay yung video sharing site. So, ito madalas natin itong namimit. Ito yung mga website na kung saan inaalaw niya yung mga tao na mag-upload o kaya mag-share ng video clips, ganyan, sa public. So, sa Facebook, may, ma- may meron na nito yung video sharing site sa YouTube, ganyan. Kaya mga example ng video sharing sites ay yung YouTube, Facebook, Flickr, and yung Twitter, Uh, so, Instagram, so yun yung mga sample, o kaya TikTok, so yun yung mga sample ng mga video sharing sites. And ito naman yung mga key features ng Web 2.0. So, ang una yung tinatawag na porksonomy. So, ito inaalaw niya yung users para makategorize and classify or i-arrange yung information gamit yung mga freely chosen keywords. Ang foxonomy, isang term dyan ay yung tagging. So, pag nag-add ka ng tag sa, sa, sa YouTube, sa Twitter, o kaya sa Facebook, mas madaling mong ma-search. Kaya nga nalalaman kung ano yung pinaka-trending. ba diba? Kung sino yung pinaka-madalas gamitin na tag, yun yung nagiging trending. And meron din yung rich user interface. So, ang content is dynamic and is responsive to users' input. So, ang example nito would be a website that shows local content. And yung user participation. So, inaalaw niya yung owner ng website. Hindi lang yung may-ari ng website ang nakakontrol sa content ng website na yon So, inaalaw niya yung mga client niya o yung mga bumibisita doon na makapag participate o makapag-contribute sa website. So, others are able to place a content on their own. Ibig sabihin, pwede mag-comment, mag-review o makaya mag-evaluate o kaya magbigay ng grade. And yung tinatawag na long tail. So, ang services are offered on demand rather than on a one-time purchase. So, this is synonymous to subscribing to a data plan that charges you for the amount of time you spent on internet or data plan that charges you for the amount of bandwidth you are using. And we have here that Web 3.0. So, itong Web 3.0, ito yung Read Write Intelligent Web. So, it was suggested by John Markoff. So, sa'yo nag-suggest ng, o nagsabi ng name ng Web 3.0 during the publication ng New York Times for the third generation of the web. So, in this generation, yung Web 3.0, all the application on the web or mobile will be upgraded will, with more features. So, it, it applies some principle of Web 2.0, yung two-way interaction na hindi lang yung owner ng website pati si client, pati yung mga bumibisita sa website, kaya nilang makipag-interact sa loob ng website. So, i-adapt yun ng Web 3.0. Ang Web 
zero will be more connected so open and intelligent with semantic web technologies distributed database and yung natural language processing ibig sabihin kahit boses na natin kaya niyang intindihin na so we have the machine learning na din machine reasoning and autonomous agents and meron na rin siyang tinatawag na semantic web so na provide ng framework na kung saan nag allows data to be shared and reused to deliver web content especially targeting the user so ang web 3.0 then it is a web of data so changing the web so ito yung mga types of website meron tayong tinatawag na e-commerce so ang e-commerce website is a website where people can directly buy products from um, sa may e-commerce website kasi most big brands and plenty of smaller ones have one hindi kagaya noon na yung mga malalaking company lang ang merong tindahan di ba so ngayon may mga tindahan na online which is the e-commerce na tinatawag so any website that includes a shopping cart and a way for you to provide credit card information to make purchase nagpo-fall dito sa tinatawag na e-commerce so pwedeng pasok mo dito ang Shopee, Lazada, ganyan so ang business website naman ay any website na nagde-devote sa rep ang um, pagre-represent ng isang specific business. So, it should be branded like business, yung may same logo and positioning and communicate the types of product or services na ino-offer ng isang website. Then, meron din tinatawag na entertainment website. Dito sa entertainment website, kapag isipin mo ang internet, para siyang browsing habits. Yan. Na pwede kang mag-isip ng mga website or kung ano pag naboboring ka dito ka pupunta example manonood ka ganyan so maglalaro ka so yun yung mga for entertainment purposes kaya siya tinawag na entertainment website na pag naboboring ka dito ka pumupunta and the portfolio website ang portfolio website is devoted naman siya showing example ng mga password so isang example ng portfolio website sabihin natin yung jobstreet.com ganyan di ba so kasi ang service provider nito um who want to show potential clients the quality of work they provide so pwede silang gumamit ng portfolio website para ma-collect yung mga best sample of the past work they've done o kaya para makapag-collect ng data information ng mga nag apply sa trabaho ganyan mas madali kasing mas madali kasing naka-consolidate pag gumamit ng portfolio website so, itong type of website na to is simpler to build than a business website and more focus on particular tasks which is collecting work sample. So, ito yung kumbaga ang, kung iisipin natin ang portfolio website para siyang database o para siyang isang lugar na kung saan iniipon yung mga information about sa isang tao at pinapakita doon yung output niya. Yan. And we have the media website. So, nagko-collect ng news, stories, and uh, or other reporting. So, ang media website, there are some overlap here in, with entertainment website na pagpapalit natin. Pero ang media kasi, more likely sila sa mga reported pieces in addition or instead of content meet purely for entertainment. And ang brochure website naman are simplified form of business websites. So, for business that know they need an online presence but don't want to invest a lot on it. So, yung tinatawag na brochure website. So, hindi lahat nandoon. Kung baga parang ang brochure website lang, eh, um, pahapyaw lang ang laman niya para lang may showcase lang siya. So, ang simple brochure site that includes just a few pages lang naman and layout of the basic of what you do and provide contact information Okay na yon. Kung ano yung product nila, saan address nila, ano yung paano sila puntahan, ano yung, yung mga details pa nila na iba, yun lang laman ng brochure website. And the non-profit website. So the same way that the business need um website to their online presence. So yun din yung non-profit website para malaman o oh, yung presence nila online. So Non-profit do as well. So, a non-profit website is the easiest way for many potential donors para makapag-make sila ng donation and will be the first place many people look.
to learn more about yung sa non-profit and determine if they want to support that organization or hindi. So, next is the educational website. So, this website, um, so the website of educational institutions and those offering courses nagpo-fall dito sa category ng educational website. So, itong website na to, ang primary goal niya is to either provide educational materials sa mga visitors or sa client or sa mga bumibisita sa website nila or mag-provide ng information sa mga educational institution. Pag sinabi natin infopreneur website, it is creating or selling information products. Ang mga example ng information pa products ay yung courses, tutorials, videos o mga e-books. So, yun yung mga infopreneur website. Kahawig lang din siya ng business website at ng e-commerce website. Ang pagkakaiba lang ng infopreneur ay yung intelligent or information ang binibenta dito. Then next, we have the personal website. So, hindi lahat ng website is or not all website exists to make money. So, hindi, so, so ang iba, hindi naman ganon. So, many people nag Um, nakikita nila yung kahalagahan ng pagkakaroon ng personal website para to put their own thoughts onto or into the world. So, this category includes yung mga personal blogs, yung blogs nila, mga photos, diaries ng mga tao para ma-share lang nila sa mundo yung sarili nila. And the web portal. So, ang web portal are open website na dinesign for internal purposes ng isang business, organizations, or institution. So, ito, nagko-collect siya ng information in different formats from different sources into one place to make all relevant information accessible to the people who need to see it. So, it often involve yung may login, ganyan, and personalized view for different users para ma-ensure yung information that's accessible and most useful to their particular needs. And meron din yung wiki or community forum website. So, dito sa may part na to sa forum, from the word forum, ibig sabihin, usapan. So, most, peop um, most people are familiar with wikis. Alam na natin yung wikis na doon ka makakita ng maraming information, ganyan. Though, most famous example of one noon ay si Wikipedia. Pero ang mga wikis kasi can be created on pretty much any subject you can imagine. Ang wiki is any website where various users are able to collaborate on content and all make their own tweet, tweaks and changes as they see fit. So, may mga wikis or fan communities for business resources and for collecting valuable information sources. Thank you for watching to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and click on bell icon to get notification on my channel. Salamat po!